Hi, everyone. Glad to be here with Brandon. Brandon is a funded level four uh, trader at the Fivers, and he has a lot of experience and insights that might be very insightful for everyone. And I would like to, to, uh, to ask, to ask uh, Brandon about those. Briefly, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? How old are you? How long have you been trading? Uh, so we can uh, get you know. Gotcha. Yeah, so I am 27 years old. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I started trading maybe like five years ago. I was introduced to it um, on Facebook by some people I knew who were doing some other businesses. Um, they were actually selling like some holy grail trading system that was going to like make you rich. And I kind of fell for it. Um, and, you know, after that, I got I really just started I was following signals for quite a while. And, uh, you know, I would see some brief luck um, and then lose it all and repeat, rinse and repeat. Um, and then eventually I was like, I'm doing something wrong. Um, and I decided to seek out a mentor um, a couple, maybe like two and a half years ago, three years ago. Um, and that kind of really changed my perspective on trading um, just to learn about and like really treat it as a profession um, instead of like a hobby or gambling and really understand that I had to, you know, be, you know, strict and diligent uh, with my trading approach. Um, so, you know, got mentored by him and uh, I decided to join the military. So I had, a, had to take a little break from trading, but um, not too long ago, I, I decided to, actually, if you go back, I did try the fibers during the time of doing the signals and it wasn't, I didn't do too well. Uh, but just a couple of months ago, I joined back and, you know, with my own approach and my own knowledge, uh, I was able to tackle um, several of the, the eval count and then the early uh, funded levels. So. Nice. So I would like to show uh, everyone your stats from your previous account. And I believe there's a lot of uh, good information you can provide everyone. So let me go ahead and, sh and show that. This is your uh, first account. You started out at, at 20. You managed two accounts, actually. So you have two accounts and you started with this one and this one right here, which in only four days, and five days you managed to get to the target. So that looked very easily. Um, although it, your stats change from account to account and you end up just getting to the target. For example, in this one, you had an, a negative win ratio, uh, but you have, a, you, had a, you have a very large risk reward. So that's a way you compensate in order to get to the, to the target. So, how, how were you managing this account and how, how do you get to the target that, that fast? Um, so, um, that one thing is I was really, uh, if I remember correctly, I was trading the pound dollar. That's kind of one of my favorite pairs to trade. Um, and there was, um, some, that, was, that was when the initial like news about like interest rates and all that kind of started sparking up. and. I kind of, you know, I took an educated opinion on, you know, where I thought other people thought that the market would be in the future. Because, again, like that's kind of the level that as traders we need to think about is not where we think it'll go, not where other people will think it'll go, but where they think it'll go in the future. Uh, so I took an kind of educated guess um, with that. And at the same time, um, ex uh, there's actually a video on my Instagram. I'm pretty sure maybe of this one of the trades I took on this account. Um, but there was a, like a beautiful kind of head and shoulders that had appeared in an Elliott Wave structure. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's kind of one of my favorite technical patterns to trade when I trade uh, technical. Um, so I took it. Um, I, I really didn't need a huge stop because, you know, the pattern was going to be invalid. And, um, yeah, everything kind of worked out in my favor. So. Okay, so you completed this one and you advanced to two accounts of 80K each one. This one and this one right here. Uh, this one looked pretty similar. Maybe you took same trades on both. In only five trades, you managed to uh, get wow. to the target to achieve 10% 10, 10 uh, return. And in this case, your win rate was almost perfect. You, you, you had a 90% win rate. Um, so, wow. and, and, and we can see here, you did focus only on the uh, pound dollar. So wh what do you change on this account? A, you know, so I definitely, I would say, um, there was a little bit of elation kind of after initially passing the eval. I felt like a milestone in my life. 160 is the largest account I, I had ever had. Um, but I think you know, at this point, like a really, like the mental side really did kind of start to hit me, um, at least I think in the past. And for, yeah, I'm pretty sure many traders can resonate with it is that, um, you know, we really, you know, we're, we're 
seeking and, and we can't wait until we can be a full-time trader. And um, I, I think that the feelings that come out of that, you know, lead us into taking four trades. Um, so when I was doing this, like I love my current job. Um, you know, I was really actually not in any rush. Like I wasn't trying to crush a target so quickly. Um, I was really just focused on understanding that, you know, this is the long game and hopefully in four or five years, you know, I'll be consistently profitable, you know, a small amount enough a month or I'll pass. But you know, I think that that mindset and not rushing the you know, understanding and, and then kind of allowing, therefore, my trades to play out a little bit longer and hold me through a little bit more of a drawdown and, you know, not getting any strong emotions when it came to the trade management, just kind of allowed the trade to work for me instead of against me. And um, yeah, it seems like I want it pretty fast. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's very valuable. Uh, a, a lot of people, you know, they see results of other traders getting results very quickly and they want to mimic that and they want to rush their systems. And actually, we need to think of trading as a, as a long term process and not something that happens uh, from one day to another. Would you agree? So once you complete this account successfully, you move on to this account. 161k, yep. 160k, and another one, 160k. Um, and once again, in a relatively small period of time, you got again 10% return. Um, but now you're you're managing here larger accounts. So, is there anything mentally or something you needed to change or tune in your strategy or your or yourself? in order to succeed in these accounts? Uh, I would say, yes, uh, this is definitely when I started to notice um, a little bit more of a mental challenge. Uh, if you, if, I believe if you, put, if you look at my drawdown graph, I had a decent period of drawdown um, on this account that I had to recover from. Uh, fortunately, you know, and I, again, um, I'll, I'll usually leave a little bit of my profits in the account to give me a little bit more of a wiggle room. And I did that, so I was able to tolerate a little bit more, but, um, it was still uncomfortable when I uh, I was that low, um, you know. But again, I think I probably stepped away from the charts and just took a deep breath and you know, you know, understood that I needed to follow my strategy. Um, and again, like uh, none of my emotions get in the way um, with taking a trade you know, in the past, uh, especially when I was a loser. And people might resonate with this feeling also. Is, it's like if you ever watch a horror movie and you, and you know something the very bad is going to happen and you can feel that anxiety in your chest and everything and, and that emotion appear. Um, you know, I started to feel that um, before taking a trade. And, um, you know, usually in the past that might lead me to not take the trade or to exit out early. Um, and, I, and I was having that feeling a lot. And, you know, I kind of had to tune that out and realize that, you know, that is where my emotions are getting in the way of my trading. So, you know, um, just keeping it uh, under, like staying mindful, you know, and aware of my um, emotions at the time. And, you know, if I had that feeling that I had always felt right before I did something really bad, again, like it, it, it would just hit me with, um, you know, I would have strong moments where I had a fear of losing. And as I was in that drawdown, and I just had to remember that, you know, the times in the past where I've, I had that same feeling and I reacted to it by, either exiting our trade or moving a stock wider or something like that and lost. I remember that same feeling led to that. And I, I think there is a credibility to having emotions as data. Um, so whenever I had that feeling, when I was getting that drawdown, I just did the opposite. Um, and I held through it, you know, closed my laptop or phone, whatever device I was trading from at the time and kind of let the trade play out. And uh, again, it worked in my favor. I was able to recover through the drawdown and, Eventually, you know, after that little losing streak, the probabilities of my strategy that usually works started playing out in my favor once again. So. Yeah, just just to to explain to everyone, uh, at these these little drawdowns you were on your stop out level, you were actually using your last your, your previous profits as as drawdown cushion. So that's why you when you were not stopped out, but at those levels you were probably like three percent or four percent down. Uh, which for a lot of people, it, they struggle to recover from, from that. And you, you did that um, in, incredibly, very impressive. Um, Thank you. So, so you succeeded on these ones and you 
moved on and you're managing right now two accounts of uh, 320K each one. Uh, so this is one and this is the second one. Both of them, you're in profit. Uh, so you're actually managing more than half a million uh, dollars in capital. Yep. <laughs> so that's, that's, a lot, uh, that's, a, that's a lot. Think, yeah, think that's, about, a, um, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of money. Um, and I would like to ask you if you do you you practice any kind of um, meditation or something you find valuable valuable and uh, useful for for your trading. Yes. Uh, yeah. The book is called Market Mind Games by Nani Soul. It's about really about understanding the the emotional and mental aspect of trading and understanding that it really is a lot about feelings um, and. Um, you know, how our feelings make us react to certain trades because as much as we want to make it a, a math game, um, even, you know, a strategy that we back test if you do that, um, you know, that is backed upon the feeling of confidence in that strategy. So well, I recommend it. But one thing she mentioned um, is about like changing the colors on your screen because uh, generally when you see the color, you know, we associate the color red and if you use an MT4, usually blue with profit and, and that, that will lead to certain emotions such as happiness. Well, like, you know, when I see $3,000 blue, um, I'm feeling pretty good. And, and I'm like, you know, that's enough money. I was supposed to trade and, and call it a day, but, um, you know, really I should let the trade play out because it's probably, you know, it could be a $10,000 trade and I got a little bit too excited. So I definitely recommend changing the colors on your screen, uh, black and white, and, and, and even every so often, like every quarter or every month, changing them again so that you don't like build any habits and know, of knowing that. Uh, and, I, and I think if you take some good data and journal, um, you might notice a difference with that alone. So that's one thing that, that I've done. And, and of course, yes, I, I do mindfulness meditation. Really, I think the benefit of that is, again, comes to being aware of your thoughts. Um, I, I don't think without it that, you know, those times before, as, when I, as I said, when I was in drawdown and I wanted to react in fear that I would have, you know, had the wherewithal of my own, you know, mind frame to know that that was a fear reaction. Um, so definitely, you know, mindfulness, being aware of, you know, how your emotions might be influencing your trade management and everything uh, is definitely also very beneficial. So. Correct. Now on the process, have you been uh, withdrawn uh, profits or have you left them just to compound them, the profits? Oh, no, I've definitely, uh, I've withdrawn uh, quite a bit. So I think my, my last withdrawal, I took like, 6,500 6, from both accounts, like 13,000. Um, uh, you know, I don't even think it's important to treat yourself, you know, uh, so I'm getting my floor done. I uh, part of that and saving the rest. And I've, I've withdrawn before that. Um, it's no, no strict time. Like sometimes I'll withdraw all of it. Um, but you know, at this point in time, like, uh, you know, again, I, I think as I think the more actually that I've been withdrawing my profit is kind of actually been changing my mindset and making me take like kind of rush it for the profits instead of again that slow rolling so i'm actually going to start you know uh, leaving my profits in for a bit and kind of again pretending that this money doesn't exist because again like i said in the beginning um again once you try to rush towards that outcome which for me is the point where i can almost be a full-time trader doing this uh it really does influence us and i've, I've noticed it for me so i'm actually going to leave it in there so that i don't have that money and then i can actually i think i'll treat it um a lot better um you know, these accounts have actually been a little slow going. I just had another period of pretty bad drawdown on this one that I just recovered from. But I think it was part of because I was just getting a little bit too happy about the money that was coming. Yeah, <laughs> it's part of the process and adapting to a new and larger account. So, Brandon, maybe share with everyone just general experience with the Fivers. Uh, would you re recommend to, to, to join or something who's just starting out? What would you recommend to do? What's the yeah. correct mindset or, you know, just final words, final tips for everyone? Well, yes. Uh, for anyone watching this who's not a part of the fire and maybe you've been shopping around for different pop firms, absolutely the best. Um, like with hands down, like this is the best one. Like you start with real money, you know, you guys have been more than accommodating and, you know, so quick to respond to any email or any hiccup I might have with the withdrawal. And there's definitely a great community, um, you know, the, there's like so much, you know, the webinars and everything are a great asset. Um, so, you know, I definitely say to get started. Um, and again, I think a big thing is just, you know, as you join it, um, you know, you don't compare yourself 
to others and, you know, keep your expectations in line. Don't get too elated about your winners or too negative about your losers. Um, just understand that, it, you know, at the end of this, it's pretty much a probabilities game and that you just need the time for it to play out um, and just kind of let it play its course. But yeah, it, it's been great. I, I, I'm so, I took out a, uh, a credit card to actually to get the second account and it was like the best investment I've ever done. So I paid that off and, you know, a lot of others now, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so Brandon, I appreciate the interview and the words and your time. And thank you very much. And you know how to reach out and hopefully you get at the proper time to your target and you will be soon managing more than $1 million of capital. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind words. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to our continuing relationship. Thank you for Con Congrats uh, on, your, on your achievements. Thank you. Bye, Brandon. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.